What annoys you while playing video games? When you're at a part where, if you die you have to watch an entire cutscene again no skips. Or games with no indication that the cutscene will lock you out of a previous area with no way back to it. Also, not giving you an indication of the point of no return. Trying to explore a little, and you find out you missed something really good, because you stepped a toe over the wrong line in scene. When the main character does something in a cutscene that they can't do during gamma play, or the reverse. When the plot relies on them being unable to do slash endure something that is no problem during gamma play. I love Red Dead Redemption 2, but the main plot hook is the leader of your gang trying to get enough money to get everyone to Tahiti, and meanwhile you routinely donate orders of magnitude more money to the gang. It can kind of be hand waved away by saying Dutch never actually intended to go to Tahiti, so the money is arbitrary, but there's several points in the game where Arthur could just go oh, we need to pull this heist and steal $5,000 so we can go to Tahiti? No need for a heist. Here's $5,000. And another $5,000. And $10,000 more. Who wants money? I got money for everyone. When my character can't do things I could do like climb over a 3 foot high wall. Could skip half of Dark Souls 2 if you could just climb a wall. Jaligan is personal friends with me I as a key. Escort quests. The target is always trying to get themselves killed. Or when you walk with the NPC, but your normal speed is faster than them, and you constantly have to keep stopping to keep with their pace. Witcher 3 nailed that mechanic. They'd match your speed every time, even if they were leading you somewhere. If you walked, they walked. If you ran, they ran. When your character says something different than what you meant with the chosen dialogue option. L.A. Noire. Picked out in a completely calm interrogation so far. Stop lying, you piece of crap, or I will shoot you right there. I laughed my ass off when I thought a grieving mother was forgetting something, and I wanted to doubt she was correct. She described in detail what happened, while barely holding back tears only to be met with. Bullcrap. From my guy. It was not what I wanted at all but absolutely hysterical. When I increase the difficulty but it only makes my character weaker. Yes. Instead of actual difficulty increase, what used to take 8 hits, to die now takes 32 hits. Not more difficult, but certainly more boring. This is how I felt playing Ark. The bosses never got harder, it just took way longer. When you beat the boss, but then the cutscene has you lose. Bish, I handed that guy's ass to him. Those bother me, because what's the point in winning the fight? Couldn't I just let the boss walk all over me with the same outcome? Why do I have to beat him just to watch myself lose? Why can't I just lose and get the cutscene? I liked how Halo Reach approached dying in a cutscene. You fight endless waves of enemies until you eventually lose. It feels like a losing battle from the start and I much prefer that if the reality is I lose no matter what. Yep, it sucks if the game makes you try again when you lose. Then the win condition is watching a cutscene where you lose. If the cutscene has me losing then just let me lose and still progress. The inverse of this, where an early boss is basically guaranteed to womp you, but you can beat it, if you're good enough, is a lot of fun, so long as the time is taken to make some small change to the scene that follows. I know there's one in one of the Kingdom Hearts games where, if you manage to win you then pass out from exhaustion, right after which is cool. Cutscenes that cannot be paused. Yeah, nothing like I'll go pee when I clear out this room. Just one more thing to go and done. Oh wait, crap a cutscene and it's important to the story and it's really long. Then when you try to pause, it instead skips the whole cutscene. The posture I always find myself in. What do you mean? Chairs were made to be laid down on and you can't prove me otherwise. No, you can taunt yourself into a pretzel to properly sit in a chair. 3D games, where you can't tell where you will land after a jump. And then you land it, but you reflexively jump again a little bit, because you hit right at the edge and you fall off. When this happens, and I reflexively jump again, sometimes by some miracle I still make it, and then panic jump again and then die. Lag. I've played so much lagging video games when I was a kid that I think it impaired my reflexes in real life. Lag truly sucks. I lived in Asia, but played online with my American friends. 
I'm so used to lag that is definitely throws off my playing. Getting stunned constantly. Haha, ha, you got up, and I stunned you instantly again. Isn't this fun? Welcome to a stun loop for the next 95 minutes straight. When my late game god mode character who can kill anyone and everyone in the game randomly gets snuck up on and dropped by one punch in a cutscene, putting me in the villain's clutches. Even better when you just shredded the villain in the boss fight, but then you lose, because the script says so. One of the things I really liked about Dragon Age Origins is that there's a boss fight that's really difficult, and if you lose you then have an escape from the dungeon mission. However, if you manage to defeat the boss, there's no stupid cutscene where you get defeated. You just stroll out the building without getting captured or thrown in the dungeon. Everyone in the house suddenly needing me for one reason or another. Yeah rice wet to god, it's as if they can smell that I booted up my system to play a game. They're alerted to the sound of you getting to sit down for the first time in 5 hours. Binary moral choice system. Option A, donate to the poor. Option B, eat babies. Cotter 2 did this kind of thing so well, with Creer in your head constantly criticizing your choices and challenging your understanding of right and wrong. 90% chance to hit. Miss. 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 If it ain't 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. Why I choose Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower instead of Blizzard, Thunder, and Fire Blast. How crap I am. I can see you're having problems with the tutorial level. Would you like to change the mode to only story? People that yell at you for messing up when I'm just trying to chill after work. This is why I turn off voice chat in games, even though some of my best experiences were with a solid squad working together. Problem with voice chat is that it's hit or miss, but when it misses it just ruins the rest of your day. When games waste my time. So many games are padded with unnecessary bullcrap, and it's like I only have so much free time in my life. It's probably the number one reason I'll drop a game or not finish it. I like a good long game, but I do miss the 10, 15 hour story based linear games. Perfect length to play through a week after work. I played so many back in the 360 slash PS3 era and kind of missed them. I replayed Ghostbusters, 2009. Recently and it was just perfect to pick up for an hour or two after dinner. Not everything needs to be a big open world, quest filled epic. Games like Deadpool, Force Unleashed, Bioshock Infinite were great after a long day of work to relax to. Besides the GOG game, are there any other good ones? God of War was about the perfect amount of open world for me. Any more than that, and I lose interest. Crazy leaps in difficulty. My options for Civ 6 are currently beat the game with little to not difficulty, or move to the next level, where I'm in last place for every category the entire game, while barely fending off barbarians who have units twice as advanced as me. To piggyback on your comment, it's always bugged me that in Civ and many other games like it, a difficulty increase doesn't mean the AI plays better, but instead means they get production bonuses slash I will get penalties. They will still run their units into a meat grinder or fail to defeat a simple basic strategy or trick. The game doesn't really get more difficult, it just means you need to find out how the AI falters. It also means you don't get to improve your tactics against a similarly strong opponent, you just need to get really efficient at massacring their crappy units. The best way I found to beat higher level opponents was to create a WWI style killing field, where I draw all the opponents units into, shoot them with ranged units from multiple angles, and then quickly run in, and defeat a city, when they are low. This would usually be a crap tactic against humans, who are good at the game, but it works okay against higher level AI. Escort missions, especially when the AI is so stupid that it ends up making me fail the mission and start over again. We could either go around this camp full of enemies or wait until they're cleared out. Nope, let's go straight down the freaking center and if we get hit, slow down so that they can shoot us more. When an NPC you need to follow is faster than your walking speed but slower than your running speed. Just make the NPC have an adjustable speed to what the player is doing. If they have important information they need to tell the player add a small cutscene at the end giving the player the download. Ghost of Tsushima does this so well. 
I always saddle up and ride my horse at top speed while the NPC sprints to keep up. Sorry old lady that your family was just wiped out by Mongolians, but if you want my help you better chase my horse. Quest slash missions that keep you in tracking for some inexplicable reason. I shouldn't need to repeatedly google how to progress through the game. You could spend months arguing with more Owind fans. TBH I loved it. I played it ages ago, but I remember freaking off into a random direction, stumbling onto a city, having a super hard time at the beginning, but then getting stronger and better, just doing random crap. Eventually I stumbled upon the main quest again completely by accident, it was great. When it's a team game and the team doesn't work together. What's the point then? Ah yes just like Rocket League. Dude, this competitive match today, team member stops in the middle of the game, only down by 2, to cry about his team sucks. During the match he would drive around eating up all the boost then use all of it up, to fly through the air and miss the ball. Stay on the ground and STF you. When stuff is cut out of the game to be sold back as macro transactions. I can tell what should been part of the base game you jerks. To this day, I'm flabbergasted that Javik and Leviathan are DLC for me 3 when they are both critical components of the game's lore. At least Leviathan came out a while later. Javik was literally day 1 DLC and that's just wrong. That didn't hit me that's bullcrap. Bro I dodged that. Or the karma, but somehow equally furious I literally dodged that, but okay. The other people playing. You made one minor mistake. I'm gonna go toxic and throw the game cuz mad. Infinite enemies. I noticed this first in an older Call of Duty game where at a certain point you shoot a bunch of enemies trying to clear the area, but more just spawn. You had to progress through the area to make it stop, then it went back to normal. There's a level in Back 4 Blood that does this too. Every section of the game I've played you can kill all the zombies in an area, so you can explore a little bit, knowing the director will throw more at you, if you delay too long, but the level, where you blow up the boat just throws horde after horde at you, until you get to the lower levels. It's just weird. Like where are all these enemies actually coming from? 1. I've just finished the room. So I'd have to say hints that describe what you're already doing instead of how to progress from where you are. Not played the sequels, yet so I don't know if they fix this. 2. Good features of games that are left out of the sequel. Elder Scrolls, I'm talking to you. One word. Levitation. I understand why they got rid of Mark and Recall, but man do I miss Mark and Recall. When the room Jesus freaks me in the butthole, RNG mechanics are often unavoidable, so it makes no sense to get mad over them, but a bad roll at a critical moment can bring me close to an aneurysm. Like that one dude missing 5 willow wisps in a semi-final match at Pokemon World Championship lore. Any mandatory requirement for an internet connection in a game where you never do anything that would require connecting to the internet. You must create an account. Screw you. You must access the game server to play. Screw you. You must download and install patches for 3 days before you're allowed to actually start playing. Screw you. You don't actually want to talk to or interact with other players or find out other people's scores or see how well other people are doing or get holiday themed DLC or be nagged to buy stupid skins and pay to win credits but you must have an internet connection anyway. No one screw you very much. You also need to download their launcher and launch that launcher with the launcher you were already using. Just because. I did that when I downloaded the Far Cry games on Steam, I will always hate Ubisoft for this. Plot critical NPCs behind multiple loading screens. Quick travel to the wizard's tower, load, enter the tower, load, climb the stairs to the second floor, load, go through into the portal to the wizard's inner sanctum, load, talk to the wizard. It's less common than it used to be, but still gets me every time. Sounds like someone visited the College of Winterhold recently. People walking in front of the screen, and cutscenes that can't be skipped. They stand in front of it for a moment too. Mandatory updates that take up several gigabytes of storage and do nothing to improve the game itself. Hey they just want every cosmetic microtransaction to be instantly applied if you happen to purchase all of them.
Okay I'm gonna throw it out there when people crap on someone who is low level starting out in the game. That's how you keep people from picking up games in the first place. If you're being mean to them, of course they are going to quit playing. You'll never get new players if you're bashing them for not knowing how to play the game. Be nice, and you'll get new people. Film grain effect in horror games, your crap won't be more scary, because it looks like, as if in playing on an old court monitor. I think it can be cool when applied well. I find it terrible when it's just a filter over the entire screen, but if the film grain is only applied to darkness or dark areas, you don't lose clarity, because the areas that need to be perceived aren't covered in the film grain, while areas that can't be perceived anyways remain unaffected. Bad UI design. Whenever it's on either extreme S lens, UIs that are tiny, clustered and hard to read, or UIs that are gigantic and cover half the screen, as if the UI was designed for 1440p, but the rest of the game was created for 640p. Also, unnecessary extra button push for small repetitive things, like hitting more buttons doesn't mean the game's more active, if those button pushes have no meaning or reason to exist. RDR2 on PC had a lot of this crap like Y, R interact with objects either E, R, F, Shifty and whatever else just pick one. My guess was that the controls were designed around controllers first and then imperfectly translated to PC, although I haven't tried playing with a controller to see if things make more sense that way. I agree though, how the heck do loot items from a cupboard and loot items from a dead body end up being different keys? And to bring it around to UI design, UIs that are clearly made for use with controllers and are super clunky to use with a mouse and keyboard. Sometimes to the point that you give up and use arrow keys to navigate around. There's a whole mod for Skyrim that is all about making the UI suitable for PC use, Sky UI, and there are too damn many other games out there that could use the same treatment. Item Durability Frick off and let me play my game, not craft 20987463598045 axes. Item durability without the ability to repair items cough cough bot what? Yeah, that kinda ruined it for me. Item durability is okay if you can use your weapons for a while and repair them, but my weapon breaking after like 5 swings? Come on. I know the game gets a lot of praise, but I stopped playing because of that. When a sports game refuses to make any significant changes to its game, but asks for more money. Stop buying FIFA. We all know that's what you're referring to, and they'll never stop until people stop paying 70 euros every year for the new one. Yep. Admit to yourself you like to pay for non-progress, or stop paying for it. If the game requires you to be a sweat. Like, if the game isn't fun slash optimal, unless you try hard as much as you possibly can. I have a full time job. I have other hobbies and goals within those. I maybe have 5 or 6 hours a week to commit to video games. I'm not building the rest of my life around specific raid slash war times. I'm not competing against 14 year old gated community kids who can play 7 hours a day during the school year, 12, 16 hours a day in the summer. I'm choosing a different title. Exactly why I always choose games that has story as a difficulty setting. I would like to chill for maybe an hour after work with a drink and just plow through enemies with a nice story, not grind my ass off and not win. Not being able to save whenever I want. Like, I have other things going on in my life, if I can only fit in 10 minutes of play right now I want them to be worth it. This is the entire reason why my play has slacked off so much bc the play has become a chore in a lot of games. In a similar vein, games that don't let me pause. Bloodborne is such a good game, but the inability to pause, as a grown ass man, has caused me so much trouble when I have to do things like answer the phone, respond to my wife, go pee, etc. Imagine calling yourself a gamer and not peeing in a diaper. Late to the party, but I can't stand narrative dissonance because the devs can't sacrifice gamma play for the story. It was painful during the later part of Insomniac's Spider Man. Where Spidey complains about having broken ribs and being utterly exhausted in a cutscene and immediately goes into gamma play the same as before, while he traverses the city at full health and no changes to any of his animations. 
it's hard to buy into how beaten he is, and the sacrifices he's making to save the city when nothing about the gamma play fundamentally changes. Not exactly narrative dissonance, but I love how in Gothic Eye, when you become better with a weapon, the animation changes, and looks like you genuinely got better at fighting. Way too few games do that. Feline Interference. Kajit has wares, if you have coin. A wall of text, and at the end they ask if you understand, and if you select no you get to read it all over again. I remember when they did this in Ocarina of Time, and they swapped the blasted options the second time you meet that damn owl. People telling me how to play, when I'm just trying to relax. Related, if I'm playing a puzzle game and someone else keeps trying to tell me how to solve the puzzles, especially after I've asked them to stop. Puzzle games are one of my favorite things to play with friends, but we have a rule. To never pick a game that only some of us have played we've had far too many incidents of the people who've already played ruining the fun for the people who haven't. When my right joystick drifts on PS4 and I can't properly control the camera. I'd managed to 100% Red Dead Redemption 2 before I found out that it's possible to switch the control settings for fishing so ruining the controller isn't actually necessary. RIP my right joystick too. People being toxic to new players. You chose to start later than me. What the frick is your problem? Now, get back to the bottom of the queue. Beta. I need to win from laddie. Campers in shooter games. I hate em. Because I can't beat M. Depends on the game. Games like Fortnite or PUBG aren't games for killing, they're games for not dying. So staying away from the fray, as long as you can is legit. Shrub campers unite. Wait, don't do that. Stay the frick away from me, I'm hiding. PPL walking in front of the TV. This, like can't they duck, or wait or even ask to pass. It's the worst, if they stand in front of the TV fetch quests to progress the main story plus too much backtracking. Bots. I know botting will always be a thing, but in MMOs it's an issue with me. I'm not worried about PvE or PvP bots as I feel those are easy to crack down on and general aren't as good as an actual player. I'm complaining about economic bots. Bots that farm roots for hours on end. Bots that spam dungeons for soloable items. Example herb nodes in classic WoW. Bots that play the auction houses. These bots can often times be harder to detect, and can destroy markets on servers, by flooding them with items, sold at minimal markup, because they farmed so many of them. Then you have OSRS bots which are basically the economic backbone of an entire country at this point, because of real world trading getting so out of hand in that game. Scripted failures and successes. Like, if I cream the boss in gamma play, I don't want a cutscene with the boss actually winning and just going easy on me. Similarly, if I die, I don't want a cutscene where I actually win by some intervention or whatever. Don't pull that BS on me. I want to win through my own power or fail due to a lack thereof. Force tutorials. Force tutorials that insist on explaining every last action to you and won't progress until you perform it. You can walk forwards with the W key. Try it now. Good. You can walk backwards with the S key. Makes me think of my favorite tutorial the one in Far Cry, Blood Dragon. It just craps on forced tutorials, while itself being a forced tutorial and it's hilarious. The main dude just has no patience for it. To walk. Just walk around. That entire game is hilarious. Rubber bending in racing games. It's fun watching Mario Kart 64 speedruns and the AI keeps up with these world class players no problem to the point that they have a real chance of not getting first place. At least that game has some excuse. The N64 wasn't powerful enough to actually simulate 8 races at once all the time. You might notice the frame rate dropping at the beginning, so when they are off camera they basically don't exist. It just puts them wherever along the path it figures they should be, randomly adding and removing items to give the impression that they're being used slash hit. Still, it could be less blatant 